Hello, everyone. Martin Patella here for Life Enthusiast Podcast. And uh, today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with George Urena, or as he was used to be known, Jorge Urena. <laughs> yeah. um, he's, uh, he's the CEO and the founder of a company called Yutco, and they are a supplier of agriculture products from Peru. And uh, that's George's native country. And he's got some excellent connection. And he's been well known for the quality of the products that they are bringing in. George, welcome to Life Enthusiast. Well, thank you, Martin. Uh, thanks for having me uh, uh, today uh, at your, uh, at your uh, podcast. And uh, so, uh, I mean, we, we've done, a, I think, a couple of videos already on uh, yeah. different products. Uh, I think it was Maca and Camel Camel. Yeah. Uh, so we have a couple of uh, new products for your audience as well. Uh, one of them um, is the uh, Sachi Inchi. Uh, which is the um, uh, is an omega three six nine seed that grows in the Amazon of Peru, and uh, we also have another uh, product which is probably very common for many people: the uh, cacao uh, right. cacao uh, pot, uh, which is uh, produces a, a cacao bean uh, out of which we uh, get many products like uh, cacao uh, butter nips. Uh, liquor and I mean you can manufacture your own chocolate I mean with these products as well right yeah. on all right that's great so we could in fact no that might not work well to use the uh, um, sacha inchi fat in making a cacao uh, making a chocolate with the cacao that probably uh, wouldn't work well right no uh, and the reason why is because uh, when the uh, oil uh, I mean, it's rich in omegas, uh, it's a very delicate oil, so it's not subject to be uh, uh, processed with high temperatures. And uh, eventually, I mean, when you're doing this, sometimes you need that, uh, high temperatures. I mean, sometimes, okay? okay? And uh, especially with chocolate. I mean, when you're manufacturing the chocolate. And uh, and that's for the uh, tempering and, you know, uh, I mean, the whole process to achieve a, a bar or something like that. And... Uh, uh, but the uh, the oil is absolutely uh, wonderful, very unique, and it comes from a uh, very unique seed, same as the uh, the maca that is originally from Peru. The sacha inchi also is originally from uh, from the Amazon of Peru. It grows mainly, I mean, in the uh, uh, mountain sites. Uh, that's that's the area where uh, where this plant likes to uh, grow. Uh, and it was just found as a, you know, like as a coincidence, meaning, I mean, people were traveling, they found a, a plant with a seed and um, they started asking and, uh, well, right of a sudden it became, uh, you know, uh, a, a known uh, uh, crop for uh, a few people in the area like mainly like our Aboriginal people that lives in the surrounding areas in the Amazon. And uh, so we did a little bit of uh, research on the uh, products and, uh, and we started uh, learning how to produce, how to manufacture, how to grow uh, sustainable activity on this uh, uh, crop. And uh, uh, we have an a, a absolutely wonderful product rich in omega-369. Uh, so how rich, uh, so that your audience uh, have? The the products that we have got from Yutco in the past have been superior quality, just wonderful. So I'm expecting that there's something wonderful about Sacha Inchi and how it's able to deliver these omega-3 oils because they're they're quite fragile, right? Like in, in the European tradition, that's mostly flax oil that's, that's used for the omega-3s. Right. But, uh, okay, but here's here's the thing. Okay, um, talking about flaxseed oil, for example, because we uh, we launched this product probably back in two thousand and five, to be uh, precise. But I mean, at that at that time, people were not aware of uh, this uh, this plant, uh, the crop, the Sachinchi crop, and it was kind of uh, you know uh, just they they knew about flaxseed oil. But they didn't know about this uh, plant, and uh, you know it was not successfully introduced, if you want. Okay, mm -hmm. at that time, it was probably premature introduction. 
Okay. And actually, let me tell you, Martin, we, we've done everything, I mean, way ahead of time. We introduced the liquid maca too long ago. For example, the camel camel that was introduced 2004. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, it's, it's one of our best sellers uh, all over the place. And uh, well, talking about the Sachi Inchi, uh, the omega uh, three content uh, of uh, the, on this product is over fifty two percent. Okay, uh, so it's fifty two percent omega three. Uh, I think it's thirty six uh, omega uh, six, and and the difference, whatever it is, uh, omega nine. So it's it's it's, it's the perfect ratio of uh, omegas. So what is this oil good for? Uh, and I think that's probably the important part, right? The, right, the exactly. Oil. Why would I care, right? Uh, well, okay, so high uh, dosages of omega-3 uh, are good for um, to increase your good cholesterol, to reduce your bad cholesterol, and uh, to eliminate uh, or reduce substantially uh, triglycerides. Of course, you have to observe always your diet. That's That's... That's a normal thing to do. Okay, do exercise as well, but the oil works really good. Also mm -hmm. improves your memory uh, function, uh, supports, let's say, uh, your normal, uh, uh, you well, know. All, all of it, right? I mean, well, yeah. because, because the omega-3 fats are so involved in every aspect of human existence, whether it's metabolic or I mean, metabolic and memory goes hand in hand and you have digestion yes. and each cell actually is made from lipids, right? Yes. Cell membrane. Correct. And uh, here's an, uh, a little difference with this product. And it all depends also on the way you process it. Because you see, most of the uh, oils are manufactured in, in an industrial way, okay? There's two ways to extract the oil. One is called the expeller. Uh, method and the expeller basically means you take uh, I mean your raw material whatever it is and you put it through a um, a heated chamber where there's like a, like a kind of an endless screw like a drill like a drill bit okay yeah. and then uh, that will push the raw material and extract the oil out of the uh, the raw material whatever it yeah, is I mean you're crushing the seed as, as you go right but here's the thing Okay, when you do that, you're heating up the raw material and there is also uh, a lot of heat happening inside the chamber where the extraction is done due to friction. Yeah. Okay? And that causes the oil to go unstable, yeah. unstable. Okay, so most manufacturers, when they do that, uh, they have to add what they call tocopherols. Okay, so what are tocopherols? Okay, it's basically uh, like one of the compounds of the vitamin E. Okay, so the vitamin E has two compounds, tocopherols and tocotrienols. So guess what? When we manufacture our product, okay, we found uh, a good amount of vitamin E, but the whole complete spectrum, the tocopherols and the tocotrienols, which means we don't have to add any kind of, uh, you know, uh, stabilizers. Additives. Yeah. Yeah. Stabilizers. Okay. And also, we found that the best way to obtain the oil was just using a cold press, uh, hydraulic pressing, basically. So okay. just flat, flat squish. Yeah. Yes. But, okay, we do it 30 seconds every three minutes. So it takes a long, long time to do it. Okay. It's, I mean, I'm not saying it's manually, but the machine actually works, I mean, very slow to avoid uh, uh, heat caused by friction. Yeah. And that, I mean, obviously will get you, I mean, a good oil, very stable and uh, so stable that our oil will not go rancid. I mean, seven years, 10 years, no no issues whatsoever. That's, that's okay. actually really significant. Yeah. Because most most oil manufacturers are having to refine away the omega threes because they're so unstable that they go rancid. Correct. And uh, one thing that uh, uh, I mean, we uh, we have a special way of doing things, and uh, I, I think your your audience uh, need to understand why. Uh, I mean, how to achieve quality on a product. Okay, and in this case, I can basically tell you. I mean. What, part of it is just the uh, the cold pressing, 
okay, of the uh, of the oil and do it in slowly, okay. But also uh, we uh, we follow once we obtain the oil after the pressing, we we put it through a um, like we put the oil to rest, okay. So when you rest the oil, all the small particles that may pass through uh, will just go down, precipitate, yeah. okay, and then. What we do is just we take only the oil and we put it through a, uh, we call it a, uh, it's like a filter, okay? It is just a cold filter, okay, that will trap all these little particles. So what we have is just an absolutely wonderful and superior quality oil. Uh, I mean, I would say probably a lot better than flaxseed oil for sure because it's actually more stable. You probably know about flaxseed oil. I mean, sometimes doesn't last that long. And even if you're opening the bottle, I mean, you need to put it in the fridge uh, to avoid getting rancid. Yep. Uh, that, that will not happen with the uh, Sachi Inchi oil. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would like to share with you uh, some pictures. I don't know if you- uh... Yeah, yeah, please do, please do, okay. put it up. Okay, so I will just uh, open up uh, here a, um, a picture. Uh, of the uh, plant. Okay, so basically this is the Sachinchi plant. And uh, as you uh, as you can see, uh, it grows like a vine, okay? So it, yeah. it, it reminds basically me, grows like a grape, yeah. grape. It reminds me of how beans are, green beans are grown around here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I've never seen the green beans uh, growing. Uh, but I mean, to me, it remind me, uh, I mean, grapes, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's the same idea. So it takes a lot of uh, uh, patience and care because you see the such inchi, it's uh, in a way uh, an intelligent plant and it likes to be uh, taken care of. So, I mean, the more you care about the plant, the plant produces more, believe it or not. It, mm -hmm. It's like that. So let me uh, show you uh, another picture uh, on the... Um, yeah, so this is just to give you uh, like a better idea how this grows. It grows like in rows, like the uh, like the grapes. Same idea, and uh, I'm going to show you uh, the actual uh, fruit. Good. Okay, so that one there is the actual pot. Okay, of the uh, sachi inchi. So mm -hmm. what happened is after we we uh, I mean the plant grows. Okay, it produces this pot that contains usually five and rarely six um, seeds, okay? So the seeds are inside Yeah. In this pot. Now, something very interesting because the pot contains a lot of iodine. Huh, that's surprising yeah. in uh, land like that. Yeah, and uh, well, we still uh, are investigating what, I mean, what can we do with the, uh, the actual pot? Because you see the pot, uh, needs to dry on the plant. Once the pot is dry, and I will show you a picture uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I mean, we, uh, we, we take the pot out, we, we remove the, uh, I mean, all the layers uh, that we, uh, that the, the, the pot can uh, have. And then we take the seeds, then the seeds are peeled, and then the seeds are ready to be pressed so we can extract the oil, okay? Mm. Now, here's something interesting also, because uh, the seeds itself contains a very uh, high amount of protein. So you're looking at probably 60% protein with all the uh, essential amino acids uh, on the actual seed. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you extract the oil, the protein doesn't go. Uh, right. Yeah, that so, goes separate way. That's the solid part that you're putting away. Correct. So you can actually have the oil in one hand, and also you can have the uh, sachi inchi seeds as a snack. Now, as a snack, uh, it it tastes um, it tastes like peanuts, uh, but there's no allergen in uh, in this product. So initially, we were thinking in developing a uh, snack or a protein powder, which actually we have but we don't have it available yet to the market. I mean, we are on the 
I mean, on the works to uh, to get it, uh, you know, manufactured and and packed. Uh, but the product is absolutely wonderful. So it, it has all the benefits, either as a snack or um, as the oil, which was the main intention originally. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would, in fact, be quite interested in seeing if we can use that for the superfood production because we currently are using hemp seed protein. But right, such a inch sounds pretty interesting. Oh, it is. Uh, so I have a, another picture. Well, this is me in the fields. And I will uh, I will show this. Uh, so this was taken, uh, well, I would say a few years back, okay, uh, but uh, still, uh, I was probably younger. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. you, you you sure are bigger than most of the guys around you, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, so uh, my friends in there are, uh, I mean, the actual farmers, they uh, they take care of all the, uh, the uh, plantations and the growing operation. And this is a very unique uh, area, which, uh, you know, it gets, it, it grows in a mountain site. Uh, it's not really, on a, uh, it doesn't grow in a flat area. Uh, the soil is volcanic soil. Mm -hmm. So actually, this grows on the opposite side of the and of the Andes, the, the high mountains of Peru. So on one side we have the maca root, and on the other side we have these plants. All right. Yeah. I mean, this is this is not high mountains. This is well, this, it's what, four probably, or five thousand feet high in elevation. I would say twenty. Yeah, uh, in meters, I would say twenty five hundred meters or so. Yeah. 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 Seven thousand feet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and I I wanted to show you also the, uh, the the dry pot. Okay, so that's that's the uh, let's say the raw material uh, before the whole process starts. Okay, so that's the pot that is the dry pot, and uh, inside we have um, let's say between uh, five or six uh, lobes with uh, seeds inside. And uh, it, it is very tedious to get uh, rid of the pot because there's many layers. It's not just one. And there's layer after layer after layer. So it is a very well-protected uh, seed. So that's why it makes it also very, uh, you know, interesting, unique. Uh, and of course, I mean, there's a, a lot of uh, oil that can be produced uh, or extracted out of the seed. It doesn't look like because it's dry, but I mean, believe yeah. Is really really uh, yeah. amazing. So yeah. this the the processing of this dry seed is it manual or is it mechanical? Uh, the uh, okay, so the ex I mean the removal of the um, of yeah. the pot and all the layers is uh, usually made by hand. Uh -huh. Okay, but uh, it is a tedious work and uh, mechanically can be done as well. So we we basically provided uh, the uh, the farmers with uh, some uh, machines. I mean, not electrical. I'm, I'm talking about manual. Okay. Hand cranked. Yeah. Hand crafted. Yeah, sorry. Cranked. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, it it will uh, remove, not totally, but partially, uh, I mean, the layers. Then, uh, I mean, we have another machine that actually cleans completely the... Uh, uh, the seed, leaving the seed ready to be processed. I mean, for oil extraction or or snack. But now I uh, also have uh, uh, another um, uh, point to uh, to mention. When we uh, when we extracted the oil, okay, we we you know we have a remaining. We call it the cake. Okay, so it's after you press, you have like a like a big cake of. Uh, like a mass, okay, of uh, of seeds, and uh, you cannot utilize that uh, raw material for the protein powder. So we develop something different, okay, which is um, which is a very unique uh, way of doing our things, okay, to achieve a nice flavor to the uh, to the product. So our oil, as well as the uh, uh, the, the snack, okay, the seeds and the protein powder. It tastes like peanut butter, honest. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, you, you may have some questions. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of it. 
All right, so here we have this Sacha Inchi oil, rich in omega-3, which is really important for maintaining uh -huh. health or building health. I mean, the the, uh, the conditions that this supports are super broad. I mean, it goes from brain function to cardiovascular function. If you have things like um, oh, hardening of the arteries or things like that, that yep. like this, highly... Um, benefit from this right uh martin uh and without exaggerating but uh we we had a lot of experience with the product i mean not just uh, here in canada uh also in the united states and, and in europe and uh i can tell you that within 30 days i mean uh the consumer will have visible results i mean the uh, healthy benefits of this oil are amazing it, it really works miracles what sort of dosage? Well, we recommended one uh, tablespoon per day, and that's enough and sufficient. Okay, you don't need to overdo it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And that is enough just to, you know, uh, reduce your values. I mean, if you let's say have have high cholesterol uh, or suffer from any uh, cardiovascular disease, I don't know. I mean, it really does help a lot. Yeah. It rebuilds. That's great. Yeah. Well, okay. And how is this packaged? Well, uh, the oil comes uh, in in a bottle of, uh, I think it's 250. Uh, Eight ounces. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the snack, we do have the snack available as well. And I think it's probably 100 grams or so per, uh, per package. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I remember, uh, just as, a, as an anecdote, uh, many years back, uh, I don't know if you re recall uh, Vega? Yeah, I sure remember, yeah. They got bought okay. out by some major food company. and uh... Yeah. So before that happened, uh, the owner, I mean, the person uh, who I know. Uh, I think that was Brandon, right? Uh, well, Brandon. Uh, oh, no, was, he was the spokesperson, right? Yes, and he was in partnership with uh, Charles Chan. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, they launched the uh, Savvy Seeds. I don't know if you remember the brand. No, I do not. Okay. So Savvy Seeds were actually the Sachinchi Seeds. And uh, I mean, they they used to have a big problem. Okay. The oil and the seeds, okay, were rancid very quickly. Okay. And then, of course, I explained, okay, well, because, I mean, he was, I mean, your products are so good. I mean, why? I invested so much money in, in this uh, savvy seeds. And I said, well, I mean, I mean, you're probably, I mean, using too much heat on your product, on your production. And I think that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Because that, that gets the oil unstable and the seeds as well, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, they, they try, because of their volume, they try to drive the cost down and production speed up. And... Never know, exactly. But I mean, that is, heat... that is the normal process there. Yeah. Yeah. But heat damages the products. And that's that's one thing that we, we, don't, uh, we don't use. Yeah. Great. So yeah. I imagine that you're using this yourself, huh? Uh, I do. <laughs> I have a bottle of, uh, in my... Uh, in my, in my, in my Can you tell some stories that you remember from people taking it? Well, yes, I uh, I do have some uh, interesting anecdotes, okay? But, uh, yes, of course, I mean, these are just experiences, okay? Yeah, of course. Uh, and, uh, for example, uh, remember when I, when my wife and myself, we bought uh, our previous home, okay? Uh, the, uh, the sales rep, uh, this uh, builder, uh, I told us about, I mean, some health issues about the family. And and she had a uh, autistic uh, child. Yeah. Well, I recommended the uh, Sachi Inchi oil and along with uh, Camu Camu and Maca and, you know, I mean, some of our, our products. Well, guess what? Okay, the oil was given to the uh, uh, autistic child and... Um, Right of a sudden, I, I, I remember the uh, the problem was that the uh, child was um, I call it, when uh, when you are overexcited, uh, you know, uh, uh, yelling. Uh, so it wasn't a calm uh, child, okay. 
after taking the oil and she 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 wrote me a testimonial uh well basically stating i mean i mean talking so much about the such NGO, how it helped i mean her child and uh so i was surprised i mean i honestly i didn't know i just recommend it because i know it works for i mean brain function okay yeah. but at the same time you have to keep in mind that a good source of omegas uh will rebuild okay uh tissue will rebuild uh membranes you name it so it's, it's it's a good source of raw material for your body to you know to heal okay right on. yeah yeah I think that's, totally, that's totally makes sense that this sort of thing would happen yeah great okay well thanks george, george. um how about if mm -hmm. we switch topics and uh mm -hmm. Talk about the lovely cacao that you grow, or not? Well, you don't grow it; you have farmers grow it, but that you're yeah. bringing to to us. Well, we uh... well, let's. I mean, cacao is such a well-known commodity. Oh, it, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, chocolate is one of the favorite drinks in great many countries, and uh, I mean, it's hot chocolate. I mean, I grew up drinking a cup of hot chocolate every morning. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And the, uh, I mean, it was first we had just a dry powder mixed with some fat, and I think I think we were using milk and whipping cream. Mm -hmm. But so let me tell you the story about cacao. <laughs> yeah, do that. It's uh, it's, it's probably a, a very interesting story because there's uh, there's different varieties of uh, of cacao, and um, uh, the one that we carry. Uh, is particularly uh, called the Criollo cacao, which is probably well known. I mean, in this industry, many people know about the Criollo cacao. And it is an original variety uh, of Peru, I would say Peru, Venezuela, uh, maybe some parts of Brazil. And, uh, okay, there is many varieties, okay, of cacao. And I can mention some of the original varieties. Uh, for example, uh, you have uh, Forastero, that's one of them. Uh, Trinitario, that's another one. Uh, there's another one in Ecuador called El Nacional, mm -hmm. which is basically uh, like an like from like a local uh, yeah, from right. Ecuador. And there is also uh, other varieties that were genetically modified over time and now are invading uh the you know the fields yeah. because i mean it's it's a business of, uh, of course and many people are just trying to move towards uh varieties of uh, plants that can produce more okay but not necessarily are good for you or better than the right. other right so we, we're with the commercially uh, i guess they would be hybridized do you think that they actually genetically modified or just selection? No, they are they are genetically modified because you see, I mean, you can do uh, and you have to forgive me on this, but I don't know the right word in English. Okay, it's called injerto, and that means when well, that, you that means insert. Okay, inserts. Okay, thank you. And uh, basically, you combine varieties and then you achieve a new one or yeah. something different. Okay. Yeah. And uh, like, for example, we have a, uh, just to give an idea of these inserts that uh, I mean, we've done in Peru, we have a banana, like a small, tiny, petite banana, yeah. okay, which was inserted with apple. And basically we call it manzano, a banana, which means it's a mix of uh, apple and banana, which is kind of weird, but I mean, it worked. But in the case of- So the does system, it taste more like apple or more like banana? Uh, actually, both. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of funny. But in the case of uh, CCN51, that's a variety of cacao that actually was, it's, it's not even a hybrid, okay? It was, it was genetically created, okay. okay? And the main purpose, and as you know, I mean, all the genetically modified food uh, is just designed to produce more and you know, I mean, yeah, man, yeah. we need yield. We need yield, yield per, per, per acre, per, uh, acre or uh, hectare, whatever it is. But yeah. yeah, and so we we focus our attention just on the Criollo variety because I mean, to us, it was the best 
uh, we we had a lot of uh, uh, you know farmers growing this variety in, in one location of Peru. Uh, there's many locations, obviously, but I mean this particular one that we uh, that we have, we have uh, 28 farmers growing small parcels. So, so don't think it's a, like a huge extension of land with cacao. No, it's, they're very small. Uh, I mean, the, the largest uh, farmer probably will have maybe eight or 10 acres. Okay, no, he hectares, sorry, uh, of land, yeah. which is not really that much. Well, that's times two and a half in acres. So if you go 10, that would be 25. Eight would be 22, 20. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I will show you a picture of how the Criollo cacao looks like. Yeah, that would be. I, a... I don't know if you want to uh, see that. Yeah, of course, I want to see that. I would like you to illustrate the difference, right? It's, <laughs> but uh, the, the way I understand it, these farmers actually grow it in their own individual orchards more than anything. It's sort of like a yeah. family, family garden type of a forest or a piece of forest where they have mm -hmm. these cacao trees growing, right? Uh, do you have the picture on your uh, on your site? Yeah, we see on screen the uh, beautiful purple pod. Okay, so that is the Criollo cacao. Okay, so uh, it is very uh, rich in nutrients. Okay, that's one thing that I can tell. And uh, uh, I can share with you uh, later. I don't think I have it here with me right now, but I can share the... Uh, the um, uh, nutritional profile and it is amazing the uh, the nutrient profile that the uh, cacao let's say on the powder or the nibs uh, uh, are uh, coming from this uh, from this uh, product mm -hmm. okay so uh, I will just I mean stop the share for now okay and uh, I will just give you uh, uh, another idea in a minute so uh, we we deal with organic cacao now how organic, okay? Because you know there are plagues and you know that can damage the uh, the crops. So the farmers there, they uh, they show me a very peculiar plant, which is actually used, I mean, as a pesticide. Okay, interesting. So they they have their own uh, organic pesticide, okay, to avoid plagues. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, I don't know if you ever seen a cacao like the cacao pot, I mean, inside. How well, you when you, I mean, this is a fairly, uh, what's the word? There's a lot of pulp in it. When you slice it open, there's exactly. a whole bunch of white pulp in it. And then the beans are sitting in it like a, yes. a little birds in a nest kind of thing. I'm going to show you, okay, a, a different variety of cacao so that you you have, I mean, or your audience will have a, the, the right idea what we're talking about here, okay? Yeah. And uh, I would like to share this picture with you first. That's different. Yes, that's different. Okay, so it looks more orangey, red, maybe. Yes. Okay, and it is not purple. And th this doesn't mean that, I mean, it's not ripe or anything. So you can see in the back of the picture, another cacao. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. So we're dealing here with different varieties. Okay, and some of them just grow wild. Which variety is this one here? Uh, honestly, we have no idea, but it's, it is different. It's not the same. It's not Creole. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just going to uh, show you uh, how the uh, cacao looks inside, uh, which uh, will be interesting for your uh, audience as well to, um, to understand what's inside and how that's a yellow one. Yellow and green. So the green is, of course, not ripe yet. And the correct. yellow one is getting closer to being ripe, yeah? Uh, correct, but that's yellow. It's different, <laughs> yeah. right? And, uh, okay, so I'm just going to show you, okay, what we have to do in order to uh, to achieve all the uh, products people know, like cacao powder, the cacao nibs, the beans, and, and so on, okay? Uh, once the cacao is uh, harvested, uh, we, uh, we collect all the... Uh, uh, all the pots, the pots are then uh, open, okay? <clears throat> and then we uh, we take the pulp with the seeds, and the seeds are actually the cacao beans, okay? Now, uh, the cacao, the, the, the whole pulp 
with the uh, with the seeds are uh, put in a box for fermentation. And here's a key, uh, let's say, secret uh, to to achieve the uh, the product. Looks uh, to me like you're preparing some sort of a, a bed. bed on which you're going to be fermenting the the Correct. pods, right? Yep. So what we do, and this is just, I mean, us, okay? We we mix the cacao uh, pulp with the seeds, and we put it with uh, banana leaves, but we also add to the mix banana, ripe banana. Okay. So the fermentation, when the fermentation occurs, uh, the uh, cacao bean will absorb all these uh let's say sugars from the uh, from its own pulp plus the banana and it will acquire a different flavor like flavor and aroma and that's that's key for the i mean for the uh, final product let's say mm -hmm. and <clears throat> your the fermentation normally takes i mean for let's say an industrial um you know uh, production uh 7 days okay like a whole week uh, us, we do two and a half days, and that's it. Why? Because if you allow the fermentation to go, I mean, up to seven days, you will probably get a better yield for production, but you are not going to get much nutrients and much benefits out of the cacao. Okay? You're going to get flavor, and you're going to get maybe a lot more for production. Let's say... I mean, large uh, chocolate companies will probably like that kind of uh, cacao bean, which was fermented for seven days. Us, we only use two and a half days, and that's it. Because it preserves most of the benefits of the cacao, all the antioxidants, the flavonoids, the flavanols, uh, uh, you know, any, any compound that actually is good for you will be there. Otherwise, the carbohydrates will just damage the product and will just go to a, to a different, you know, category. Not healthy, I mean, not as healthy as, I mean, the one we uh, we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I will show you how uh, how this is done. Okay, and it's quite interesting the fermentation, uh, yeah. because you see that's that's the start point. And so okay, so here we have the vat, but mm -hmm. this is without the banana leaves, right? Uh, well, the banana leaves are at the bottom, okay. Uh -huh. And then uh, once the fermentation starts, okay, you have to gradually add uh, the uh, banana leaves, and then you add more uh, of the uh, cacao pulp, and then you add more of the uh, banana, Body, uh, the fruit. Yeah the fruit okay and then it goes by like in layers if you want okay but uh that's how it's done and then uh i will just uh, show you something else because after the uh, fermentation is achieved okay by hand you have to take the seeds out okay all the pulp is just not not used anymore okay uh it's normally given to the animals like a uh, you know uh, for feet, okay. So, what do what do they have? Do they have like pigs and chickens, or what do they? Give uh, pigs. Uh, actually, you got it. pigs and chickens, and I have a picture of the chicken as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it, it, you know, it is a farm. It is it is funny, but uh, it's it is, uh, and you have everything in there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's that's the whole idea is that you have a web of life, right? You uh, have. A connection of many species and many bits and pieces like you don't want to waste any resource yeah and uh okay so this is just a funny part of it but uh okay here's the chicken <laughs> all right yeah okay here's the chicken that was okay and uh, i want to tell you okay the reason why i have this picture is because the farmer asked me to take a picture of, of his chicken <laughs> He's got he's got the chicken tied with a string. Oh yeah, <laughs> to protect. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so um, so that's the funny part of it, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to show you something else, uh, which uh, you see after the uh, seeds are taken out, uh, uh, 
you know, we let it dry with the sun. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's the sun drying that actually, you know, uh, requires a person to um, rotate, okay, yeah. the uh, the seats so that the sun hits on all all yeah. areas, right? And uh, the the area where this grows is just uh, amazing. Um, all right, so here we are looking at some rolling hills with uh, yeah. trees and grass. So I guess they would be just doing subsistence farming with uh, oh, yeah. cows, it's, pigs, chickens, and all of that sort of thing. I mean, honestly, it is the most beautiful place uh, on earth. Really a beautiful. I mean, air, super clean. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, contamination uh, from the city or anything. It's just a really, really beautiful place uh, to be. Yeah, I'm so... Uh, <laughs> so among among these uh, trees, there are these uh, cacao trees growing as, as oh, part yeah. of that, right? Yeah, so this is just a like a picture of the site uh, yeah. itself of this particular farmer that I was showing you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, after just going back now to the, uh, to the actual products you can get out of the cacao, okay? Uh, so after the uh, cacao bean is, is dried and, and ready, we transport that to our manufacturing facility in Lima, and then we start with the production. So there's different ways of doing it, okay? And uh, you first have to select the, uh, the beans by size, okay? And obviously that, I mean, they're in good conditions. Because what happened is just many companies, they use everything. And when you do everything, there's good and bad, and uh, if you're using, let's say, two small beans, okay, and you expose them to high heat, which is normally the case for, I mean, quick production, uh, you're going to you're going to burn some of them, okay, and obviously it's going to produce a product that is not good in quality. I mean, aroma, taste, it's just going to be different, okay. And cacao is just some, you know, it's, it's for the chef, let's say, for the person who's using the uh, ingredients, it's all about taste. Yep. Taste okay. Great. So it, it's your preference. So we found that actually our product is the best um, in the world. We have a big company. Well, we have many companies buying our cacao worldwide. Um, I can mention a few in Europe, like Keimlin, uh, Feinstop, uh, Godiva, for example. Okay, some of, of the of the known companies. Uh, we supply the raw material. They do their own formula and chocolate, and they're well known for that, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also here in Canada and in, in the United States as well, we have, I mean, many companies buying our raw materials. And we have our own, our own, with our own brand as well, okay, which is uh, – uh, our products were subject to uh, a very strict eva evaluation, okay? And uh, this evaluation was done in Germany, okay? And this is one of the main uh, manufacturers uh, in, in the United States. Uh, for, I mean, we sell a lot of this product. And uh, our product became number one. So... Uh, and evaluated by what? By taste and... Uh, or organoleptic uh, characteristics, meaning uh, aroma, taste then the nutritional profile was far superior than any other product. And I will share with you, I mean, the nutritional profile, because on, let's say on the cacao powder I'm talking about right now, yeah. okay, it, it was amazing. I, I mean, we have a, a list of maybe over 10 minerals, yeah. uh, like copper, zinc, uh, uh, you name it. Okay, the plant is really good at binding uh, trace minerals. Exactly, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. let's talk about how a person would use it. So we have it available then in just plain brown powder, which uh, we know is called yes. cacao powder. Yeah. And you also have it as nibs, right? Uh, yeah. And we have... Oh, uh, and, the, and the butter. And we have the cacao butter. Uh, so how cacao... do we use each one of them? How would I, typical typical food and health okay. enthusiast, how do I uh, use the... Okay. Um... Our cacao powder can be used like any other cacao 
powder in the market. Okay, it's going to provide a very unique uh, flavor, very intense uh, aroma. Yeah. Uh, it actually uh, smells like chocolate without being a chocolate. All okay. right. So meaning that there's no no sugar or anything, but smells so good. I mean, it's just you're attracted. So, so to make homemade chocolate, we need fat, we need lecithin, and... Uh... No. No? Well, uh, we have our own chocolate uh, with uh, made with our uh, Criollo cacao okay. without lecithin. So you and sell it you sell it as a block of chocolate? Uh, no, we have uh, chocolate drops. Okay, okay. so it's, these are just blobs of chocolate? Yeah, like, uh, you know, like little, yeah, little drops, okay. And uh, they're made with yakon syrup, maybe a product that we haven't talked about yet. I yeah. don't know. So yakon syrup for sweetening, yeah. Correct. So we have yakon syrup and yakon powder, which is an undigestible type of sugar. I mean, the body cannot recognize. Yeah, the yakon seems like a oligosaccharide type of thing, right? It, correct. Very complex carbohydrate. Uh, which uh, is suitable for keto diets, low carb, if you want. I mean, very, not, very healthy, very tasty yeah. as well. And we use that to manufacture our chocolate. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just the chocolate side of it. Okay. So we have uh, three different varieties, like uh, the Yakon chocolate drops, the cacao nibs covered in the same uh, Yakon. So chocolate. you have a nib inside of the uh, chocolate. To... Right, yeah. <laughs> Very good product. Uh, and we also have uh, the drops with Mara's pink salt as well, which actually are not in the market yet. We're going to launch that soon. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so that's on the chocolate side. So Okay, well, but I'm still interested in telling people how they can yeah. make their own chocolate. Uh, it's, well, it's smoothies, for example. I mean, the cacao powder can be used in the smoothies. Sure. Uh, the, uh, for baking, you can use the cacao nibs. You can also use the uh, chocolate drops that we have. Uh, you can also use, uh, uh, I mean, for chocolate manufacturing, which basically you need the cacao butter, the cacao powder. And uh, in some cases, uh, people use uh, the cacao liquor. Okay, but th don't think about a drink. Okay, cacao liquor is actually the cacao mass. So it is the mix of the cacao nib and the butter uh, okay. together. So the uh, cacao contains so much fat that when you mill the, the nib or the cacao bean, okay, after chopping it off, okay, and convert it into small pieces like nibs, mm -hmm. uh, okay, you blend it and then you will get like a cacao mass, which is the mix of the nib or the bean, okay, and uh, butter, the cacao butter. Uh, that actually is contained on the uh, on the actual bean. So uh, you can use that, uh, I mean, combined with, uh, let's say, vanilla or any other ingredient to manufacture your own chocolate. Now, the chocolate to be tempered, I mean, and you're right, you, you usually you need lecithin, okay? Which is, I mean, you use, I think you can find some organic uh, lecithin. We you sell know. organic sunflower lecithin. I there have you it go. available. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you can use that one uh, because. Well, you need, some, you need some fat, right? So the on the cheap, you would use something like coconut or butter. Uh, correct. Yes. But you're, you're saying, but no, use the chocolate you, butter. I mean, cacao butter. You can use a cacao butter or any other fat, or you can combine them as well. Okay. Like coconut. Uh, oil, for example, also. Yeah. Okay, uh, you can also use a cacao powder, okay, and then, uh, well, you can use the lecithin, and then you temper the chocolate, okay, and you can actually get your own uh, chocolate bars. You can combine them with, uh, I don't know, any other ingredients, like dried fruit, for example. Yeah. Okay? Or, or, I mean, we have many people using the uh, cacao butter for just normal cooking, like a cooking oil. Oh, so, yeah. so it, it's, it's strongly flavored with the chocolate flavor. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you for example, you can take a, a, a piece of, uh, let's say, a chicken breast, okay, just to give an idea. Or if you're yeah. vegan, you can take your own vegetables, okay, and use the cacao butter, put it on top, okay, just some uh, rosemary or any other herb, and then you put it in the oven, okay, slow... Um, Cooking and roast. oh, voila! You have a nice, uh, tasty uh, uh, Ch chocolate chicken flavored breast. chicken breast. Yeah. Well, keep in mind that in Mexico, for example, I don't know if you've ever been in Mexico, they have a uh, cacao sauce. 
Yeah. Like a chili and cacao, and they. Yeah, I mean, it's quite common to put uh, yeah. capsicum, chili pepper, with yeah. chocolate, right? It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I think the uh, the main thing here is that our cacao tastes different. It is well done. By the way, our cacao butter uh, is never exposed to over fifty degrees. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Celsius, so it's very slowly done, okay, mm -hmm. and that's the main difference because when you when you go up high in temperature, okay, you're going to destroy the uh, the fat. Yeah, you're going to fry the thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay, so let's describe it. So I should probably then buy some chocolate powder, and yeah. I should buy some chocolate butter. Yeah. And then if I feel like crunching through the raw raw chocolate, I, I will have the nibs, right? Well, cacao nibs are used normally uh, as a snack for many people. Uh, they're in, I mean, they're not sweet. They're No, uh, it's its quite uh, quite bitter. Have you tried them? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's an intense chocolate, dry yeah. chocolate mass. Yeah, yeah. but you, um, I mean, you, you will, you will try our products and, and you will be surprised. They're really interesting. Well, I, I have used all of these. I'm, okay. I, oh. I, oh yeah, I got the bag of the uh, Yakon sweetened uh, chocolate drops. Okay. And, uh, that hundred gram sample bag doesn't last more than ten minutes. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, I'll have another. Well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe two. Well. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll finish the thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, I, I know many people doing uh, like chocolate chip uh, cookies, for example, or yeah. uh, you can make, uh, I don't know, like a praline, maybe mixing uh, pecans and the uh, cacao, um, uh, the uh, sorry, the uh, chocolate, uh, the yakon chocolate, maybe put some salt on it, uh, a little bit of the uh, uh, coconut oil, for example, I do that. Okay, you put it in a pan slowly, and then once it melts, and you mix it up together, let it dry, and it, it becomes a delicious snack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we have, we, we, probably next time we have to do a, uh, like a, uh, like with a cooking station or something. Well, that's what I was thinking is we should do a cooking <laughs> show where we show people how to use this. Because one of the barriers that there are is that folks just say, well, what am I going to do with this? Yeah, correct. Yeah, but there's uh, there's a good uh, uh, thing about our products uh, because of the uh, the healthy benefits that you can achieve with this. I mean, I know it just sounds crazy, just normal chocolate, but I mean the mineral content is so high that I mean your your body feels different. I mean you get a lot of energy out of it. Ah, by the way, mixing up maca. The, our maca powder six, that's the six to one with yeah. the cacao oh my god delicious yeah <laughs> really good yeah well of course i would actually add some yakon to that oh perfect yeah of course <laughs> otherwise it will be too bitter <laughs> yeah so so okay so you have a high quality chocolate that's been fermented with bananas which mm -hmm. it makes sense to me that the banana of course provides the uh the mass of the carbohydrates to do the fermentation, right? And yeah. It, and it imparts this fine aroma to it, right? It, it makes the chocolate less intense in some way. Yeah. I mean, if you compare, for example, uh, other chocolates, I mean, with other varieties of cacao, uh, for instance, the uh, El Nacional, which comes from Ecuador, yeah, uh, there is a uh, big difference. Uh, when you compare it to uh, the Criollo. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Okay? Well, it's a flavor, personal preference. It is the, the way I The way I understand it, most of the commercial uh, chocolate actually comes out of Africa, right? Uh, yes. And yeah, and there there is, uh, it is owned by one of the uh, big uh, corporations. Called, one of them is called Cargill. Yep. Uh, which Very big very big it's all industrialized and um well many people don't want to know how this is obtained already in, in africa but uh it, you you mean it's a very exploitative process it yeah is. it is yeah for sure yeah yeah and yeah there's also cacao from china I mean, really they oh, actually yeah. grow cacao in i china. mean I think, uh, I don't know about their production, uh, but I mean, the product is really, really 
I mean, I mean, not to be considered. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. not even it's not even grade B, it's grade C. Uh yeah, very inexpensive too. Okay. And uh, uh I remember I learned something in this country uh when I arrived, uh landed back in 1989, and somebody told me you get for what you pay. Yes. And I kept that in my mind all the time. It's, it's oh yeah, yeah, you can yeah. have it, you can have it. Uh, in my management practice, it was the these uh -huh. three points. You can have it fast, yeah. you can have it good. <laughs> or you can have it cheap. Pick you any go. pick any two. You cannot have all three. <laughs> there you go. Yes. So okay, uh, your uh, your customers, uh, if you uh, I mean offer these products, are going to really appreciate the uh, the quality. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to introducing this. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> thank you very much, George. This has been a pleasure to uh, get to yeah. know how you do it and what you got going. Yeah, and uh, well, uh, I think we, we could probably schedule another uh, another podcast for other products. I mean, uh, we can well, we may that. we may have to talk about Yakon and uh, Lukuma in great detail because uh, now that we have planned a cooking show, we're mm -hmm. going to have to um, talk <laughs> about making food, right? Like, yeah, the, uh, on the Yakon, I can give you yeah, very quickly, like uh, so that. People associate uh, one product to the other, right? I mean, the uh, the the cacao goes along with the yakon. I mean, the yakon obviously can be used for as a sweetener uh, for many different uh, you know product combinations. I use yakon every single day, nonstop. Okay, uh, it the uh, the ratio compared to sugar is probably one point five to one, meaning that the uh, yakon syrup will be sweeter than sugar. Yes. Okay, and uh, the the main benefit on the yakon syrup, and I put it on my coffee or any drink and anything that I want. Okay, is that our uh, our yakon is also uh, prebiotic. That's the right word. Not yeah, pro. It, it but has high level, high level of the oligosaccharide. Yeah. Correct, and uh, and. We, we tested with many people with diabetes, okay? Like for example, type two and type one. Yeah. And even if you take Yakon and you are diabetic, the sugar doesn't go up, it goes down. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. Well, yeah, that sounds great. Okay, well, natural sweetener yeah. because-, because and, of I, and, the... and I can I can tell, I mean, without any restriction, because I mean, we have, people i mean showing us pictures i'm sorry videos okay of before and after i mean taking yakon and they actually measure with the uh yeah, uh, glucometer yeah yeah correct and uh the the the, uh, the sugar level goes down now it is uh it is very good for keto diets and uh i mean i've done a keto diet uh a, a few months uh, ago uh, i lost uh, 23 kilos kilos okay. Oh yeah, you had twenty kilos to lose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I I used to travel. I mean, quite a bit, and uh, mm -hmm. you know when you go, I mean, yeah, uh, you you eat other countries eat fast food, I, and I love food. I enjoy, and well, I mean, I, it was probably a little too much. Okay, and I gained. Uh, I was, uh, you know, with uh, overweight, and uh, so. And because of the uh, pandemic, uh, you know, with all these restrictions, I mean, yeah, no travel, exercise, yeah, and so it got complicated. Anyways, I started doing the uh, the diet, and yeah, I lost that much, twenty three kilos. So right now, I'm not doing the diet anymore, and but I'm, you know, using you know the right ingredients. Of course, before, I mean, it was just uh, you know any kind of carbs, you know, anywhere. And uh, now I'm very selective with uh, so using the Yakon every day, and uh, of course other supplements as well. But, All right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So Yakon for managing blood glucose level. All oh right. yeah. Oh yeah. Big big time. It works. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to bring some then. Do, is it only come as syrup or is it? Other? No, we have the Yakon powder as well, and the Yakon powder. I mean, this is the one that we use for the uh, chocolate drops, for example. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, can be used also for, uh, let's say, smoothies, 
Okay, yeah. like a sweetener. Okay, it has a very, I mean, in the powder form, it, it will provide a different taste. Okay, but it's good for baking, for example. Yeah. Okay. I guess when, when you bake, you throw some uh, allspice or cinnamon or... And it changes. Cacao. This guy's... Yes. Oh, it also and, changes when you uh, heat it? Yes, uh, exactly. So it's, I mean, if you take it raw as it is right now, the powder, okay, it will just probably give a little uh, aroma or taste as uh, like a sweet potato in a way. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I mean, it's different. Yeah. I mean, sweet, very nice and sweet. But okay, and uh, one particular thing uh, on the yacon, uh, because there's many yacon uh, syrups uh, in the market. Okay, oh. and how how do you recognize the good and the bad? Okay, uh, <clears throat> most of the yacon syrups in the market are black in color. Uh -huh. Okay, and if you just Google a few of them, you will see like a very black, dark, okay, yeah. uh, product. It looks like molasses. Yeah. Uh, and tastes like molasses, and I'm going to explain you why. Because, I mean, fructoligosaccharides, by definition, is a soluble fiber. And a soluble fiber can only be found on the nectar of the yacon. Okay? Many manufacturers in Peru, I would say all of them, okay, they use the whole root. We don't. Our product is made from the nectar, while the rest is made from the whole root. What's the main difference? The fiber of the yacon root contains um, uh, fructose, simple sugars. Mm -hmm. And they usually, I mean, try to achieve the uh, consistency of the uh, syrup, okay, but using high heat. So when you use high heat and you have simple sugars, you're going to burn them and mm -hmm. you will achieve a dark color, okay, on the product and also the taste of molasses. Right. Okay, so if you look at our uh, nutritional profile, the uh, nutritional panel that we have on the product, you will see that the fiber content of our product is zero. Uh -huh. Okay, and that is the key thing. So we can actually give the product, our product, to a diabetic type 1 and type 2. I, have, I am not afraid. Okay, people can try the products and they, I mean, they will really, I mean, enjoy something sweet without the guilt. Okay, that that's the reason why uh, we we use the uh, uh, I mean uh, guilt free uh, on the uh, cravings. Uh, yeah, right, right. well, okay, okay, that that so, was the so idea. the sort of thing that you would flavor with it would be smoothies. You already said, or right. I guess you can put it into baking, right? Also, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, the I guess some almond flour or coconut flour or something like that, right? Yeah. So. Excellent, yeah. And mix it with yacon, yeah. Yeah, there's many, many recipes uh, online, many people using these products. Uh, all you have to, I mean, you, I think your audience uh, will have to be very select on which products they, they choose because, I mean, if you choose the wrong product, then you think that you're going you're gonna to get the benefit, but you may not, mm -hmm. okay? It depends on who, who, who's selling that product, how, is, mm -hmm. how it was processed. Okay, Okay, we can do more on the Yakon and show you, I mean, some pictures as well and everything, but uh, I, I think... It doesn't oh, look that sexy. It looks like a potato to me. <laughs> like a yucca root, yeah. Yeah, like yucca root, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so now yeah. that we're talking about all of it, so tell me a bit about Lukuma. Okay, Lukuma, uh, and I don't have a picture to show you, but... Uh, all right, well, it's it looks like a yellow avocado to me. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if, uh, I mean, you or your audience will recognize in Mexico, there is a, pro, uh, a fruit called sapote. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the lucuma is actually a related variety to the uh, sapote. Uh, it also uh, it grows, uh, it's very unique, it's original to Peru. Okay. But the flavor of this fruit uh, is like maple. And vanilla. Oh, really now? <laughs> it's really good. Okay. Yeah. And uh, well, we have the uh, lucuma powder. That's the only presentation or product we have. And the uh, the lucuma is normally used uh, for, you know, confectionery, 
like yeah, uh, baking, baking. Yeah. Uh, baking uh, even ice cream. And I think I mentioned uh, when we were talking before, Lukuma flavor is the most popular flavor uh, of ice cream in Peru. Well, it is very unique, very tasty. Uh, well, maple vanilla sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know if you ever uh, got a sample from us. On no, this part. not that. I have okay. not tried. Well, well, I'm sure you have one uh, for sure. But uh, I mean, the product is fantastic when combined with, uh, let's say, chocolate. Okay. So we have a lucuma mousse, for example, like as a dessert, that's a very popular. And they put chocolate sauce on top. Okay. Which will be wonderful if you use our Criollo cacao powder to make it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also a smoothies, uh, like if you use just normal milk or uh, any, you know, almond milk or hemp milk, uh, I mean, it tastes amazingly good. And if you combine it with with a cacao powder, for example, it will just taste amazing, really good. And especially kids, kids love it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, there's beta carotene uh, content in this product. Okay. That's the reason why it's so yellow okay or orangey in a way yeah. okay uh but not to really claim like that as a benefit is good obviously okay and i would say probably it goes more for flavor than anything else flavor aroma taste yeah okay mm -hmm. and so it's mostly carbohydrate or uh yeah mostly yeah. yeah not complex i mean some of them okay but um it is a very good product to uh you know to try really. yeah yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, George. This has been an interesting culinary trip through the uh, <laughs> Andes and Amazonia. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so very much for your time. Mm. I uh, my pleasure, and uh, it's always uh, nice to uh, you know to transmit all this information about yeah. our products uh, and about Peru and about how we do things. Uh, I think we. We 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 like to be transparent with everything, and and yeah. I think your, your customers will. will yeah, I especially it. appreciate the fact that your product is always great quality. It is. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. This has been Martin Pitella and uh, George Urena, or Jorge Urena. Let's say it properly as it should be, because we all have tradition. And uh, anyway, for life enthusiast, life-enthusiast.com. Thank you for being here.